Hey guys, Jackson Savvy here. This Windows 10 tutorial is going to cover uh, right-clicking the Start button in Windows 10. Now this may sound like a strange video, but the options that have been built into Windows 10, of course, when you left-click your Start button, gives you access to all of the things we're going to cover today. However, for those of us who want the quick access to some of the most commonly used system utilities, uh, this is a great tool. No keyboard shortcuts, nothing like that. Just a quick right click on your start button. And you're presented with a whole list of system utilities. And what we're going to do is we're going to run through a couple of these. So those of you who know your computers pretty well, this may be uh, a video you skip through real quick just to kind of look over some of the features. But we're going to run through them one by one. We'll try to make it quick. At the top of the list, we have programs and features. So this is a very quick shortcut to go in and uninstall any program that you have whether than going, rather than going to settings, programs, things like that. Quick two clicks, get right into it, uninstall what you need to. Next up, have the Mobility Center, which I'm connected to a laptop right now using dual display. So you may not have the same options here, but this is a quick way to change your uh, display brightness, volumes. Um, this one you see right here with the battery status also lets you change your uh, settings for if you want your computer on a balanced power plan, if you want to save, and uh, high performance, which if you use the laptop, you know, changing those settings from your brightness, uh, your processor speed, things like that, that it can do, can really save batteries. So that's a quick access to that. Uh, this will show your displays that are currently connected, uh, any syncing that you have, and if you're presenting like on a projector. Next up, we have the power options. This directly relates to what we were just speaking about. In the mobility center where we saw the power plans, uh, this is where you can change all that. And you can change individual settings on these plans. I always use high performance. And if you want to look at the plan settings, it lets you turn off your display at a however long you want to be done if you're running on battery or if you're plugged in when you want to be put to sleep, the brightness, and you can even get to advanced power settings on here where if you don't want to turn off uh, the internet, your wireless adapters, your USB, a uh, lot of different options here. We won't go too in depth, but it is a quick access to change that. The next one we have is the event viewer. Now this is something that most people won't get into too often and I consider myself somewhat of a power user and I get into it very rarely unless I'm troubleshooting. So this is going to be great for uh, if you're having error messages and you need to look back into your logs, things like that. So not too often you'll have to get into here but you'll know quickly how to get to it if you need to. Next is system. This will display anything about your uh, system or the basics whenever you uh, it's great whenever you buy, sell laptops, computers to just go to the system settings so you can see what's installed. And on here you can see I've got Windows Pro or Windows 10 Pro on the insider and the activation shows that it does. That isn't activated, which I'm not sure if showing my product ID is the best thing, but we'll see. Uh, on system right here you can see your processor speed, the type, uh, how much memory you've got, and uh, if it's a 64 32-bit based operating system, uh, your computer name, and you even have more options to get into, uh, like your device manager, remote settings, protection, all of that from this menu. But I usually use system just as a basic to see uh, how much RAM and the CPU of a computer. Next one we have is device manager which especially for those of you that are just upgrading to Windows 10 this is invaluable to have and I may do a whole video dedicated to how you can solve problems when you have you know the X's or the exclamation po points across here 
but device manager of course shows all the devices and hardware in your computer uh, display adapters uh, your DVD drives human interface devices and keyboards you know everything that's installed in your system if there are any problems with something like uh, a lot of you that are upgrading to Windows 10 probably are having trouble with your uh, Realtek audio devices that's something you'll find in here and this can pinpoint problems for any hardware you're having next one we have is network connections and let me drag this over from my secondary screen now this will automatically bring up any network connections that you have which right now you know of course I've got Wi-Fi but I've got it hooked uh, directly to an Ethernet cable now if you're wanting to switch back and forth or troubleshoot any connections this will show you what you have which uh, noticing now I just upgraded to a new preview build on my computer and I've got a Bluetooth adapter however it's not being detected but I am using my Bluetooth keyboard so right there I can see you know that there is a problem so quick way to see anything with your wireless devices or wired devices at that point uh, disk management comes up next and this one for me is invaluable uh, disk management comes in to play whenever you need to make system partitions uh, troubleshooting or if you're dual booting a lot of things uh, a lot of people use third-party programs, but the disk management built into Windows, for the most part, is sufficient. From here, I can see my one hard drive. I've got a SSD, which is a solid-state drive, which I highly recommend everybody to upgrade to. But if I'm wanting to change anything or set aside uh, part of this partition, you know, to store some extra stuff, and I don't want it touched, this is where I can do that. You've got all the tools you can right click make partitions shrink them all that good stuff and like I said we won't go too in depth but this is an invaluable program even for the basic user after disk management we have computer management and this will be another one of those tools that uh, you really don't mess with too often unless you're uh, making some strange changes to your computer or troubleshooting uh, a lot of people that administer, uh, what am I trying to say here, I guess uh, businesses who have IT people and they're wanting to have policies across their computers, this is a place where they go to. It also has your device manager, stuff like performance. Uh, it's just something you really won't use too often unless you're an IT person, honestly. But it is great if you need it for any uh, troubleshooting. Next up, we have the command prompt and command prompt admin, which we don't need to cover both, of course, but I'll click on command prompt admin, which when you're making changes to your computer, which you need uh, an administrative level, even if you're logged in as an admin, you want to use the uh, admin command prompt. Now, a lot of you won't ever have to go to this, but power users have to go to this all the time. From your command prompt, you make system changes on a very low level, and uh, this is the quickest way to get to it. It comes in handy to be able to right click and go straight to a command prompt when you need it. Test manager. Now this is one that even the basic users need to pay, pay close attention to, attention to. There's a lot of changes in Windows 10, which I really like the task manager. This will show all your processes running at the time. Uh, performance your CPU, your memory, how much you're utilizing. This is a great tool if it seems like your computer is slowing down. You know, aside from viruses or anything like that, you can see if something's just taking up a lot of your CPU, a lot of your memory, uh, app history, anything you've used. Uh, this is a little bit of a newer one. I'm not quite sure why they have it yet, but the next one up is Startup. Uh, and I'll probably cover cover this in another tutorial but this is where you go to go ahead and disable anything that you don't want starting up with your computer as you can see I've got the Apple push my Adobe things you know this disables them from starting up right when you do the computer it's not uh, it does not disable the program when you use it and start it up 
So making these kind of changes, there are a lot of them that you can disable from uh, starting up with your computer, make your startup a little faster. So this shows us your users that are active on the computer, uh, the details of all your processes that are running, and services. So uh, if you notice my slowing down on the speech, uh, there's been a couple changes in Task Manager, so you may not see it the same way since I've got a different build. But uh, it looks like they've had a lot of different options to look at and troubleshoot and just kind of stay up on what's going on with your computer. So great tool, the new Task Manager. Next up, Control Panel. We're all familiar with that. And from your Control Panel, you can get to just about any setting on your computer. So we won't go too much into that. We're pretty familiar with that. Uh, file Explorer. Uh, myself, I always keep one uh, pinned to my taskbar to get to this quickly, but this is also a way you can get straight to it. And just a quick notice, they did change this a couple versions back on Windows 10, but as soon as you open this up, you know, I've changed my quick access menu right here. And it may look different to you, but I've also got it to where you can go straight to your settings, or you can uninstall a program, look at your system properties, all that from right here. So. Like we've been talking about, there's a lot of ways to get to your settings in Windows 10. Next up is search, which just basically opens up your search bar that you already have. And run. Uh, run is different than the command prompt, but most basic users won't have to use it. It does come in handy as a power user. And uh, whenever you have a problem with your computer, a lot of times that's something you'll be going to. And then you got your shutdown or sign out, which gives you your different options here. And let's click desktop. I haven't done that. I guess desktop would actually be if you had a bunch of windows open. Let's try this real quick. Right click it, hit desktop. And that's kind of the same as going to the bottom right hand corner of your screen and showing or hiding your desktop. So just a lot of options here. Uh, I just want to do a video to kind of show users that you can get to all your options really quickly from right here, especially for uninstalling a program and going into your command prompts. It's a great setup that they've done, and Windows 10 continues to be really great at listening to feedback. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any ideas for new tutorials or anything along those lines, just hit me up in the comments. And thanks for watching.